Well, welcome, welcome back to our segments here, our three minutes, three times a week. Uh, we pray that these little segments are, are beneficial to you, to your walk with the Lord, as we think through the early church and how the book of Acts applies to our lives today. So today we're gonna look at the, the first church, the first church, and really we see them in the book of Acts chapter two, verse 42. And the text says, and they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles teaching and the fellowship to the breaking of bread and to prayer. So how does this apply to our lives today? The first church, the early church. Well, faithfully for the last 2000 years, right? The church has been faithfully committing unto themselves to really these four marks, the apostles teaching. This is sound doctrine. This is biblical theology. This focuses on the person and work of Jesus Christ. We think about how he, he came to live a perfect life, how he died on the cross for our sins, how he was buried, and on the third day he, he rose again, we, the resurrection, and then he ascended into heaven, and now he's seated at the right hand of God in heaven, that he's sovereign and ruling and reigning. And so it really is by salvation, it's by grace alone, by faith alone, and it's in Christ alone. Is really the key that we're looking at here, the, the apostles teaching, sound doctrine, focusing on the person and work of Jesus Christ. And then secondly, fellowship, that, that common bond that believers have together, the salvation that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, that, that he came not to be served, but to serve and give his life a ransom for many. Because of that, we're now adopted into his family. We're children of God and we, and we have the same father. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. So we have that fellowship that fellowship with one another. And then the breaking of bread, communion, or the Lord's Supper, whatever your tradition calls it, but really the, the breaking of bread. And that's really when we, when we think about, when we remember what Christ has done for us, what Christ has done for us on the cross and how he saved us from our sins and the penalty of sin. And then on prayer, the early church valued corporate prayer. Um, you see them gathering together constantly in the upper room, continually de devoting themselves to prayer. We're called to live a life of prayer and communion with God and through the Son. So these are the marks of the authentic church. Um, these are the marks of a healthy church. And then finally, verse 43, I love verse 43. It says, everyone kept feeling a sense of awe and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. So there was a sense of awe, the sense of gratitude, um, really almost even a sense of fear of what God has done too as well. Um, There's a fear and a reverence of God and a respect for God through all of this. So the church was awestruck by the power of God, by the power of God. So as we look at the first church, as we look at the, the, the apostles teaching, we think about fellowship, we think about the breaking of the bread, we think about prayer. These are the marks of a, of a healthy church. And I pray that you guys are plugged into a, a healthy chapel, a healthy church, and, and that we're ministering to you, your needs, and, and we, look to, we, we, we look forward to gathering together again. As we always circle back around to that as we're on shelter in place and isolation and these things. So we do, we long for that time that we can gather together again. Until then, we pray that these times together can be encouraging. We'll take care and God bless.